So uh, let's get stuck back into it. I want you to remember from our previous lesson, we were having a look at scenarios like this. We were looking at objects, particles, bodies that were under equilibrium. They were equilibrious, if you remember me um, mentioning that you know, made up sounding word. We were looking at situations where um, all the forces acting on a body like this um, are perfectly in balance. And at the end of the lesson, I just made a very brief uh, mention of the fact that if, for example, you know, this, this particular example here, it used to have um, an extra force on it over here, which balanced it all out. If we were to take away such a force, um, and now things are, are not balanced anymore, then what we get here is this resultant force, um, because we do not end back where we started. We don't, um, if we pictured these vectors as representing displacements, we don't come back to our origin, as it were, and so the difference between where we started and where our quote unquote displacement vectors take us, that's the result of all of our forces. So in fact, one of the reasons why it's a fairly common um, way to denote these vectors, um, you'll often see this called R, and I like to think of it, I don't know if this is what they're intending, but I often like to think of that R as meaning resultant force, okay? So what we're going to do, as um, Mrs. Lee's mentioned on Tuesday, is we're going to push forward into what happens when these forces don't balance out, right? So here was um, that second example, and what I've done is, rather than removing one of the forces, instead I've made one of the forces larger. Um, so this is um, this force going off in the, you know, somewhat southeasterly direction, as it were. Um, and by the way, you're going to hear um, compass language used a fair bit um, in some of these, or you're going to see it used a fair bit in many of the questions that you encounter, because um, in order to describe what's going on, right, rather than left or right, it's a little more, there's a bit more precision in language like, say, southeast, um, than it's going down and to the right. Now, when you have a look at a scenario like this, what I want to emphasize for you, and um, I'd love you to draw a version of this on your page, uh, maybe nearby to where you had that previous equilibrium example. Um, I want you to recognize the fact that when we think of these force vectors like displacement vectors, um, because vector addition is commutative, we can do it in any order. Um, I could say, well, let's consider um, vector A and then adding on vector B and then adding on vector C. I could, I could think about it in those terms um, or I could do it in a different order. I just want to show you what that looks like and how important it is for you to get the sense of thinking geometrically about this, right? So if I did um, vector A and then B and then C, just going clockwise around, what would that look like? Um, and I want you to take a moment just to do a uh, rough and dirty sketch of what that would look like, where you would end after you did um, A and then B and then C. Do it on your page. I'll just give you 10 seconds to kind of um, do your own one there. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to reveal it and then interpret what we're looking at, right? So. I, I don't know if that was 10 seconds. I'll give you a little bit longer. Um, don't worry about marking any labels or that kind of thing because that'll take you too long. Um, let's have a look at what you get. If you do A and then B and then C, I think this is kind of what you create, right? So our A vector was uh, heading in the north direction and then our B vector was the one I mentioned that was going sort of southeast. It's not actually going southeast because exactly southeast would not be a 120 degree angle, it would be a 135 degree angle, right? So you've got this heading off in this direction um, and then when you do C after that, and this is the important part that I want to emphasize, right? Because if I go back to where C was denoted, right? See this angle 120 degrees on the left hand side, it's measured from the vertical, right? So therefore, I also have to measure up from the vertical um, in this situation here. So you've got to kind of put that vertical back in, it's sort of disappeared. Uh, and this is very analogous to back in like years 9 and 10, when you would do questions to do with bearings, um, you would often have to put north onto your diagram on multiple different spots to indicate um, where that was actually, where your different bearings are being measured from, right? So you can see, um, after doing A and then B and then C, we end up over here. So because we don't return back to our starting position, in terms of forces, what that means is I've got this resultant force, and you can see by virtue of all of the different angles here, the resultant force is heading off at an angle um, of 120 degrees uh, clockwise from the vertical and it's going to have a magnitude of 1 which makes sense because you know if I had drawn this back to where it was before everything balances and now I'm going an extra unit off in that direction. Okay, now again, I'm going to give you a moment to think about how this would look if you drew this now yourself. If I changed the order, if I pushed on this commutative, commutative 
commutative. Commutativity on the fact that it is commutative to add these vectors together. What if you did B and then A? If I swap the order instead of A and then B, and then if we finished up with C, can you draw for me a rough diagram um, of what this would look like? And by the way, I actually shouldn't say rough diagram. I did emphasize last time that um, drawing Reason, as close as you can to scale is going to be highly advantageous to you. When you were doing diagrams um, for bodies in equilibrium, it didn't sort of matter as much because you sort of knew that you were going to come back to the start. But in these situations, you're not. You're going to end up somewhere else. And um, sometimes it's a matter of precision, as you're going to see in the examples we'll look at later today, as to whether um, it looks like that or not. So I hope that gave you a moment to draw B and then A and then C. Here's what my B and then A and then C looks like, right? I started from my origin, I then did B off in that southeast-ish direction, then goes A, and then I did C, which is sort of going in that southwest direction, right? Doing B and then A and then C clearly has landed us on that same spot. I'm still doing the 120 degrees. Um, it's even more obvious now that it's 120 degrees because it directly comes from the direction that B is headed in, right? Um, and so you can see all of the angles making up um, this equilateral triangle over here because you've got this one, one, one relationship um, and we get the same resultant um, vector. All right, last one, just for the sake of it, right? We've been doing C last in both of those instances. What happens if we do C first? Go ahead, draw where you will head if you go to C, and then do A and B, and let's see if you end up, uh, if your diagram can show where you should end up. I'll give you a minute just to do that. Well, you don't need a minute, but maybe 10 seconds. Okay, um, so here, let me reveal now what I think it should look like. Where have we gone first? Here's my origin. I went through C and then A, excuse me, <clears throat> and then uh, as I go along B, I pass back through the origin because again, I create this new equilateral triangle here. In fact, I hope you can see the symmetry um, to the one over here. Why is it that I've got this symmetry from C plus A plus B? Well, it is doing B plus A plus C exactly backwards, right? So can you see that I've got actually, um, it sort of, it looks to me like it's rotational symmetry. No, it's reflectional. It's re yeah, no, sort of. That's a bit of both, actually. Um, it's, oh no, I think I know, I'm reflecting across the wrong line. It's not horizontal, it's reflected across the origin, right? Of course it is, because the origin is where we're um, starting around. So, I hope you can see here the point, um, and that whichever way you go about this, you'll get something um, that gives you the same net force, the same resultant force. Though I do wonder, as you have a look at all three of these, if you think any of these diagrams is easier to interpret than any of the others. Um, the order that you do things, um, as we've seen before, if you were, say, for example, as we go back to, like, say, series and sequences, right? If I gave you a sequence of numbers and I said, can you please add these up? Um, you could just do them left to right or right to left, but there's going to be an order that's actually going to be easier. If you pair up numbers in a meaningful way, you can say, oh, you know, I'm going to have this blue pair, which is seven, this green pair, which is seven, this uncolored pair, which is seven. So there's an order which makes things easier. And we can do that with addition because it's commutative. So pick an order that makes sense.